morning and greetings from Winnipeg. Now, no sunrise again this morning, but at least I don't have to boost the volume so that you can hear the rain up on the roof. <laughs> now, I came back to the model table yesterday evening. I actually spent quite a bit of time here. It took me longer than I thought. Boy, have I ever said that a lot. It, it took me longer than I thought it would. <laughs> yeah, it took me longer than I thought it would to get these things all done up. And uh, uh, I, I never did do any more of the 20 millimeter guns. I, I, I thought I might get about another dozen done, but it got later and later and later. And then I thought, I've been here long enough. I think it was just after nine o'clock I quit here last night. But I've, I've got our, our 21 guns assembled except for the railings. The only one we've got is the one that you saw at the end of yesterday's episode. Now, somebody was mentioning that, uh, in fact, actually I got three or four comments from people saying that the, they thought that the railing should be down so that the bottom of the railing was along the back of the platform and I and I can see that now that I'm looking at it I probably glued this one on wrong and uh, uh, I'll, I'll move in a little later I think maybe that's the best way because you you can't see what I'm talking about here uh, I'm going to I'm going to try and do the remaining uh, 20 I think I've got an extra one of these so you know it doesn't matter if one of these is wrong uh, you can't see the railing anyway it's too small uh, so so we're, we'll try and do the other ones a little bit different. Now, here is something, I got a comment that I just read here probably about two hours ago. I, I've been up for a while. And it went like this. Uh, I paint all of my models with a brush. Now, I have been waiting to hear somebody say that. It's, you know, because I thought to myself, not, not the entire world model building world has has airbrushes. In fact, I'm sure that probably, I was gonna say millions, but I don't know about millions. Yeah, there, there could be millions of people out there that, that just paint their models with a brush. They don't use an airbrush. So uh, the, the suggestion was, why don't you try it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one that I've got the railing maybe in a little bit in the wrong place, which is most likely going to be the most delicate one because if we glue the railing down so that the bottom of the railing is along that platform, it's going to be a lot stronger. So if I can paint this, this one that is really fragile with a brush, then I will know that for sure I should be able to do all the others unless I get careless. I have a tendency to... Uh, as as I get going, you know, I, I start uh, when doing a lot of repetitive stuff. I get more and more and more careless and sloppy, and then and then I bust something, and I'm sort of wondering, well, how come I didn't break the first one, but I broke the tenth one? You know what I mean? Uh, all right, let's let's uh, recompose here and just sort of carry on. So there's there's not going to be a rollback because I didn't do any videoing yesterday. I just uh, worked away. Uh, oh, uh, somebody was suggesting that I get the Tamiya tweezers. Uh, but I, I found that I was bending the railing using using this. I didn't use Andy's bender. Uh, yeah, they actually worked pretty good. I just put them in there and, and just... Went, it went pretty fast, actually. Uh, well, faster, let's put it that way, than, than putting them in the in the bender and bending each one individually. Not, it's not as precise, and if you start making a mistake, you really don't notice it. Whereas, if the photo is in the bender, you can see uh, you're, you're doing something wrong. Uh, at least that, that's my experience. Somebody else might might have, have no problem at all with the, with the uh, photo edge plier or the photo edge tweezer. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna invest in the, in the Tamiya tweezers photo edge tweezers because I think they're a little bit pricey and they're they're too similar to, to this which seems to work just fine. The only thing is the the uh, there is a version of this that is a little bit shorter and the uh, I think the the end of it is, is shaped a little bit different. That might have it be handy at times but but I like these. 
and they're they're pretty good. I got them way back when I first uh, got the Bismarck, and when I was getting supplies that I didn't have, which was almost everything. But the only thing I had left over was the that Humbrol enamel paint. Uh, that's about the only thing I had left over from my my old modeling days. Uh, oh, and that that uh, homemade electric paint stirrer. <laughs> yeah, that, that I kept that just for sentiment. I think it's kind of a joke, but it works. Uh, okay, let's uh, recompose here, and um, uh, we'll we'll uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about the railings. Uh, I, I made up a whole bunch of little uh, little blocks here so I can take one of these very carefully and and mount it well you know what I keep saying we should move in and I don't do it let's do it Okay, let's see if we can position one of these a little bit differently. In other words, it's just going to be lower so that the railing goes along the bottom of this platform. That, that might be a, a much better fit. Um, yeah, I think once again we're going to uh, let gravity be our friend here. And, uh, yeah, that, that, maybe I may have to hold it at a bit of an angle so the gravity works both ways and it sort of wedges itself into place. So it'll want to go, it'll want to go down as well as either that or maybe, you know, rig, rig up the holder downer. Where's my, uh, tweezers here? Once again, I'm not very well prepared. I should really put the macro lens on for this. But instead of having it up like this, we'll have it. We'll have it down. Uh, I think. I think we can let gravity be our friend here. Yeah. Let's let's just sort of recompose, and uh, yeah. Okay, we've got it at about a 45 degree angle here so that the all being well yes yes that's definitely the way it's supposed to go maybe a little bit more to the right though probably gonna end up knocking it off here there no yeah I'm gonna have to rig up the holder downer Although maybe, maybe not. Maybe once again, just see if I can just very delicately tack it, you might say. Do a little spot weld here and a little spot weld on the other side. And then after it cures, then I can go at it with, uh, you might say, vigor. I, I think I've got these bent just about at the right angle, too. Now, why didn't I see that yesterday? Okay, I think I pretty much got it centered here. And I'm just going to try this. Now, this is actually my second attempt. The first attempt I bumped something like I just did there a moment ago, but I, but I did it really bad. So I have to reset up here. I just want to drop the holder downer on the bottom rail. Like that. Okay, that'll, that'll give it a little bit more stability. Now, Sample a little bit of quick setting here. I think we got it, but yeah, got it that time. 
Now come in on the other side. See, I'm trying not to move the rail. No. Why is it that I can never find the curing agent when I need it? I just want to get just a little bit out. It's not coming. Here we go. I'm just letting it uh, run down the plastic there. I, I realized that on the left side it looked like I didn't get any, but I think I did. And we'll give that about a minute. And then I should be able to, you know, go along the bottom, the bottom rail. Not with the curing agent, but with the... Uh, I might be able to do some right now. Okay, I think that probably wicked its way all the way along. Okay, now, uh, yeah, let, let's try and paint the other one that I glued on wrong. You know what? I wonder if I could break it off and, and glue it on right. I should try that. Now I realize this looks a little bit like overkill, doesn't it? But I was having a problem with this block wanting to flip around on me, even when I just would put very light pressure on it. Mind you, it was, being as it was at about a 45 degree angle, it was ready to fall over anyway. This, this is going to be just a little better. Now, uh... We were going to try and remove this, weren't we? Maybe I should be putting the macro lens back on. Maybe I'll do the other side first. I thought that would just pop right off of there. Well, you know what? I think I'm going to leave this one in the wrong place. I think that what's going to end up happening is I'm going to end up getting that uh, railing all bent out of shape. See if I can form it back a little bit here. Yeah, I think I'm just going to leave it. And, and yes, this, this rail should be down on the platform. Um, okay, so one, one of the 21, was it 21 or 19? 19 is wrong. So we've got 18 right. 18 out of 19, that's not bad. Okay, here's what we're going to try with the brush. Now, I think this jar goes way back to when we were doing the hood. Because the T stands for thinned. And the plus, if I remember right, it means that I added some paint retarder to it. Now, I just put a few more drops of the uh, X20 in here just now, and then I shook it up in, the, in my paint shaker. And uh, I, I think it's, it's, it's fairly uh, watery, <laughs> fairly thinned. Uh, I'm just going to give it a try here. I'm, the, the plan will be, you know, I'm wondering if maybe I should be doing the underside first and then put it on the rotator because with the rotator it'll it'll keep it in your field of view all the time and I should be able to turn it at a, at a good angle for myself uh, okay so maybe I'll just go ahead and uh, 
before I put the macro lens on here and uh, just try and paint the underside. Um, yeah, this this may this may turn out to the you know I, I'm going to make a prediction. I'm going to predict that this is just too takes too long to paint by brush. And um, mind you, I'm, I'm looking at this now and I'm just wondering how could I get into some of these little cracks with the airbrush? I, I guess I could. I could you know hold hold this thing in my hand and do it. Well, no use talking about it. Let's let's just get at it here, and um, I'll uh, I'll reposition just a little. I'll move in just a little bit here. Now I, I don't think it's too important that I get the the underside of this done because we're not going to see that anyway. This is likely going to take two coats. That's all right. Once I get a system going here, and I'm not trying to trying to do it on camera, it'll. It'll probably go fairly quick. I'm trying to get the the brush in there to get the uh, pedestal part, like the 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 base, the swivel ba base part. Let me check the monitor. What are you seeing there? Oh, you're kind of seeing it. When, when I put it on the rotator, we'll we'll slip the macro lens on. I, I realize you you can't see it now, but uh, I'm still. I'm still concerning myself with getting the bottom part that I can't get once I place it on the on the rotator. Now this is thinned out enough that it should shrink wrap fairly well. Oh, uh, earlier this morning I uh, I was uh, checking to see what uh, Scott, Aussie Trekkie, was up to. And I can't find his channel. Does anybody know? Uh, did he take his uh, channel down again? or well, we, we were going to do this after we get on the rotator, weren't we? Okay, just let me check here now. Am I seeing any bare plastic glinting? I kind of am in here. I'm not going to be able to see in there anyway, but... Whoops. Maybe the smaller brush might have been better to try and reach into some of these places. A small brush with uh, with long bristles. I think I have one like that too. Okay, I can always give this a second coat. Yeah, I, 
think I pretty much got the All right, let's uh, put our macro lens on. Okay, I've swung the camera around about 180 degrees here. And I'm coming in, I'm looking in straight like this. So you're at about 90 degrees to me. And uh, hopefully we can both see what I'm painting at the same time. Now I, th I think what I'm going to try to do is, is start on the uh, on the guns themselves. Uh, maybe I should do the deck under it right there. Then I'll work on the the uh, splinter rails, and then we'll do the barrels. Oh, you know I should have done the underside of the barrel when I was holding it upside down. Uh, and we'll do the railing last. And and for the uh, the railing, I, I'm going to use my my little brush here. Is that the one? I think I've got a smaller one. Well, this one will probably be okay. Okay, now I have to remember the railing is there, so don't go knock it crooked. This is uh, definitely not doing as nice a job as the airbrush would have. Because what I could have done is have it, you know, have the rotator spinning all the time like this. And then the uh, airbrush would have got into almost every little nook and cranny, as you remember from the other three builds. Maybe I'm not putting it on heavy enough here. Just sort of flood it on and, and allow the shrink wrapping effect to. Yeah, that crack you heard, that was not my part here. It was my, my uh, spotlight heating up. I can see myself having problems with the airbrush getting into all these little cracks too, but I think it would do better. I think it would do better, especially if I went at it really slowly. Okay, let's... Uh, do the inside of the splinter wall now. finding that I have to put it on really heavy. Um, I'm also finding that trying to leave it on the rotator is not as easy as if I was to have picked it up and held it in my hand and, and done it off camera, which is the way I would be doing all the, re all the rest of them. And I'm just doing it like this so that we can all see it together, so to speak. Um, okay, now. Oh my, Ron. Let's get that off of there. Well, maybe not. No, that, that'll that'll try okay. Yeah, you'll you'll be surprised at. Uh, see if I come at it like this, I can maybe get the underside. I think you'd be surprised at how the detail comes out on, on these barrels, like these are supposed to be the springs. One of the viewers mentioned that uh, 
that these palm, palm guns, they didn't necessarily fire both at the same time, they alternated. And that's where they got the name Pom Pom. I never knew that. I knew they were called, referred to as Pom Pom guns, but I didn't know, I never knew why. I always think of Pom Poms as something, something like cheerleaders wave around in the air. Okay, is there anywhere else on the guns that I've sort of missed? And how about the inside of the splinter wall? Does that look okay? Not bad. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Well, let's resaturate here. Put it on evenly and brush it out. I'm not going to touch the other side. Let's get the top here. Okay, now we're going to have to do the front. Um, it's not going too easy, is it? I'm going to have to take this off of the block and out of your line of sight and then I'll put it back on for when we do the railing. Okay, I'm guessing about uh, four or five minutes has passed here. I've switched to the little brush. I, I, can't, I couldn't get the other brush in there to do the, the, uh, the grate like for the uh, platform. From from my experience, this is where the airbrush would have done really nice because it what you see is what it hits because the, the particles of pink go in a straight line, right? that's probably not too bad for the first coat. Now let's see if we can do something on the rail. I'll do the inside of the rail first. Maybe I'll get more on my brush here so it's... The outside has already got some on it because it sort of wicked its way around. Okay, so so that viewer was right. I, I, you can brush something delicate like this, but I think when something like this, that's uh, you know, you got a, a lot of stuff in behind your delicate stuff. That's where I keep saying this. That's where the airbrush really seems to excel. I think I've probably got about as, as good as I can do here.
and, and yes I know the the, uh, the railing is in the wrong place but we're just gonna have to leave it there okay um, what's this little bump on here a piece of uh, hardened paint okay um, let's let that dry and uh, then we'll look at it and I'm going to go edit out the, uh, the footage that I've taken. I've had record pressed for quite a while here. Well, it is late. And I am not at all happy with this. I uh, guess I'll be airbrushing. And that's not the end of the world. Thanks for watching everybody, and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.